The micrometer slide is typically used to calibrate the eyepiece graticule, but we can also use it to measure the width of the field of view for each objective. This helps us estimate the size of individual minerals during thin section microscopy. To do this, first ensure that the 4 times objective is in place and put the micrometer slide on the stage. Center and focus the scale so that you can read it through the eyepieces. Move the slide so that the zero bar is aligned with the left side of your field of view. Read off the bar on the right side of the view for your diameter. As you can see, for the 4 times objective, the field of view has a diameter of 5 millimeters or 5,000 micrometers. Write this down. Switch to your next objective, 10 times magnification. Refocus using the fine focus knob only and repeat the process. You'll be looking at a much smaller section of the slide, so aligning the bars may be difficult. Take your time. Finally, repeat the process for the 40 times objective. Here are some problems you may encounter when doing thin section microscopy. Slides can only be viewed from one side. If the slide is the wrong way up, you won't be able to properly focus. To check which side of the rock thin section is up, Find the edge of the rock slip by lightly feeling both sides of the slide. If your view is very dim, check if the light source, the illuminator, is turned on bright enough or if the diaphragm is closed too far. Adjust these respectively. Also, check if the Bertrand or condenser lenses are in by accident. If none of these applied, check if the view is possibly obstructed by an only half pulled out accessory plate or analyzer. Your thin section may have bubbles trapped inside. They look like this. This can happen during the process of making the sections. If you see this in your thin section, ask the instructor, a TA, or the lab technician for help or a new thin section. Alternatively, note this in your thin section analysis. In addition to bubbles, you may also have polishing material incorporated into your slide. It looks like this. Finally, some slides have holes in them. They may not be obvious under plain polarized light, but under cross polarized light they will remain extinct at all degrees. Sometimes your thin section may show incorrect interference colors in XPL. To test for this, it's best to look at the minerals quartz and feldspar as they're very common and easy to identify. Here, you see a correct XPL view of quartz sandstone made up of rounded quartz grains, where the interference colors of quartz are light to dark gray and change four times when the stage is turned 360 degrees. This is a thin section that was not polished down enough, and therefore is a bit too thick. Instead of the expected light to dark gray interference colors, now the quartz is rather yellowish to brownish gray. Another potential cause for incorrect interference colors is if the analyzer is not in the correct orientation, east to west. Here, you see the correct XPL view of an igneous rock which consists mostly of plagioclase feldspar, showing usually light to dark gray interference colors similar to quartz. They have rectangular shape with a striped pattern in XPL due to the occurrence of twinning lamellae. This is the same thin section, both the analyzer in the wrong orientation. Have a look at the elongated plagioclase crystals. The twinning lamellae of the feldspars are now white, pale, beige, and brown, or can even turn purple. If you notice plagioclase with such atypical interference colors, then this is a very good indicator that something is not adjusted right on the microscope, and that you should ask the instructor, TA, or lab technician for help.